They did eat and were filled. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Today's gospel shows our blessed Lord on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, on top of a mountain. And there's a great number of people surrounding him. They had been with him, as the gospel tells us, for three days, listening to all that he had to say, showing no signs of boredom or fatigue or, or getting tired in any way. They were so intent on the words that fell from our Lord's sacred lips. And it was here on that mountain that our Lord worked one of his greatest miracles. By his omnipotence, he takes seven loaves of bread and just a few little fish, the gospel says, and multiplies them so that he is able to feed some 4,000 men. And then when the disciples are sent back around to gather up all the fragments that had fallen to the ground, they pick up enough fragments to fill seven more baskets, the miraculous multiplication of the loaves. I suppose Bergoglio would say, well, no, this was no miracle. He would simply say, all of these people brought their own food and they managed to share. He did deny the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, which is in itself a heresy. And that is why we do not accept him as the true Roman pontiff. When you deny the Gospels, you can be no member of the Catholic faith. But in any case, in this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, God's goodness towards men is clearly revealed. And we're reminded of the words of the of the psalm of King David, which he proclaimed many years before. The eyes of all hope in thee, O Lord, and thou givest them meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and fillest with blessing every living creature. So today, I thought I would speak to you a little bit on the goodness of God towards his creature. Every now and again, we need to be chuffed up and Again, as I've said many times, we, we listen to the news and read the papers, and everything is negative. Everything is bad. The world is going to hell in a handbasket, as they so often say. But today, let's look at the good side of things, the goodness of Almighty God. In what does the goodness of God consist? Sort of a catechism question. It consists in a number of things. First, that he desires the welfare of all human beings. This is, it cannot be denied, it is known from the very fact that he is our Father. God is our Father. And Christ himself frequently assured us that God is our Father. And he himself told us, commanded us, to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. What beautiful, what a beautiful thought to say that we can call God Father. Christ can call God Father. He is the natural son of God the Father, but we, we were adopted children. We we're adopted into the big family of Almighty God so that we can call Christ our brother and God our Father. What a beautiful thought. And every day in the Mass, the priest says, before he says the, the Pater Noster, he says, Audemus dicere. We make bold to say. We dare to say, Our Father. What a beautiful thought. And God, though, is not like so many fathers these days who care very little for their children's welfare and care little about their sorrows. He is the best of fathers who desires even more than we do our welfare. We know furthermore that he cares for our welfare because of all of his works. When we look around us in the world, at nature, and the heavens, and all over the earth, it is clear the goodness of God. It was not for his own use and his own benefit that he made these things. He was perfectly happy in himself. None of these creatures could add one iota to his joy, to his happiness. He needed none of it. 
He is in, in himself perfect happiness. The reason why he made heaven and earth is because he is a most loving father, and it is his pleasure to not only give, but to shower us with his gifts and to make us happy. He was not content, you might say, humanly speaking, he was not content to remain happy by himself. There's a philosophical principle. Goodness is diffusive of itself. Whenever we have something good, we want to share it, whether it's our knowledge, whether it's money, whether it's something else, whether it's love. We want to share it because that is a good thing, and goodness always wants to give of itself. And so it is with God. He is so happy and so joyful that he had to give this happiness to others because God is good. And that goodness is diffusive. He made all of the world around us for our sake and to share his happiness with us. And we know furthermore that he desires our welfare because of the fact of the redemption. When God sent his son into the world to redeem us from sin, he didn't merely have his own advantage in mind, but for if all men had perished, Think of this. If all men had perished in sin and had lost their souls for all eternity, God's happiness would not be destroyed. Again, because God is infinitely happy in himself. But God is... So if he didn't send a Redeemer to redeem us, it wouldn't have caused him any harm. But he sent the Redeemer because... He wanted us to be happy. He wanted us to be saved from our sins. It is the love of God that brought about the redemption. As the scriptures tell us, God so loved the world as to give his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in me, in him rather, may not perish, but may have life everlasting. So firstly, the goodness of God consists in the fact that he has our welfare in mind. Secondly, The goodness of God consists in this, that he is continuously, each and every day, giving his gifts to us. Gift after gift after gift, he is giving us. So many of them, we don't, they come so frequently that we don't often think of them as gifts from God. All of our temporal gifts, life, every breath that you take is a gift from God. Every beat of your heart that keeps all of the blood pumping through your veins is all a gift of God. Every moment that you have is a gift of God. Your food that you eat, the health that you have, the clothing that you possess, and the shelter in which you live are all blessings of Almighty God. Without Him, you would have none of these things. Think of that from time to time. What a blessing is life, for each moment is worth what? It is worth eternity. Because by each moment spent in the glory of God, you, you, you buy your way into heaven. But how great is God's loving kindness in giving us food, too? Not only to us, but to all the animals. Have you ever stopped to think of this? How good God is, not only to his creatures, his men like us, but to animals and to insects, how many billions and trillions of animals there are on the land, in the air, in the sea, how many insects you will walk by and not even notice today, ants and all of the rest, and God is able to feed them all. Like the multiplication of the loaves and the fish in today's gospel. To think of the goodness of God even towards the little ant that you won't see on the sidewalk today. He has it in mind, and he's caring for it. Think of the spiritual goods, too, that God has given us. Our reason, in order to know God and that which is good, our understanding to distinguish between true and false, our will, which is given to us to help us to avoid evil and to do good, and a conscience, which urges us to do good and avoid evil as well. 
He has given us, too, furthermore, an immortal soul. Animals have only one life. They have to enjoy it while they can, because then it all ends. But for you and me, we have an immortal soul. We're destined for a higher life. And so he equipped us with an immortal soul. And that soul is worth more than anything in this world. Everything else will pass away. But the soul in heaven will remain forever. He has given us furthermore all the graces and the means of salvation that we need, which I won't go into today. You know them all, and you often reflect on them. But finally, he has given us our Lord himself. Have you ever thought of that? Not only in the Holy Eucharist, but on the cross. He has given us his Son. What more could, our, could God give us than that? He, as it were, exhausted all of his treasury, when he gave us his son, so much does he care for our salvation. Now, every dogma of the Catholic Church should influence our life in some way or another. They're not meant to be sterile, but fruitful truths. So what does this doctrine of the goodness of God oblige us to do? I'll be as brief as I can. Four points. First of all, to make frequent acts of thanksgiving. Moses, in the Old Testament, commanded the children of Israel to be thankful to God for benefits received when he said, When thou hast eaten and art full, bless the Lord thy God for the excellent land, that is, bread, which he hath given thee. And St. Paul later on says, Give thanks always, not sometimes. Give thanks always for all things, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, through God and the Father. Secondly, we must make good use of the gifts and graces of God. If we give something to a poor man, we expect him to use it wisely, don't we? And if he, if he misuses that thing, we naturally, and I think rightfully so, become a little bit angered and will never give him anything again. God is a bit that way too. He gives us all of these gifts. He wants us to use them well. If we refuse to use them well, well then, he can rightfully take them away without any harm. But God gives us much. We must use much and make good use of them. Thirdly, we are to be benevolent towards others. What does that mean, benevolent? Bene, which means well, and volent comes from volo, which means to will. So, to wish well on others. God is our Father, and as such, he takes great interest in our welfare. And even the heart of our blessed Lord on earth was both sympathetic and merciful towards all. He wept over Jerusalem. He wept at the tomb of Lazarus. And he was always thinking of others. And so too must we act. We must will good to everyone, whether friend or foe. It doesn't matter. We must look beyond ourself and wish well for others. And lastly, we must also show the love of our neighbor in deed, not only by wishing them well, but in doing good things to them. God himself shows us his goodness indeed every single day at every meal that you take, at every mass that, at which you assist, at every sermon you hear, every time you put on your clothes in the morning, the sleep that you receive at night, and all everything else. They're all gifts of God. You see the goodness of God at every moment. And that is how we must be, obviously to a limited degree, we must always be doing good for others. Those are the ways in which we can thank God for all the goodness that he has shown us and the gifts that, he has, that we have received. Let us today then reflect. This is the final thought. We are to reflect the different attributes or virtues of God. Let us today, and this week in particular, try to focus on reflecting 
the goodness of God, that is, being good to others. Not merely naturally good, spiritually good. Help them, some way or another, to save their souls. And may no one ever come into contact with you and go away a worse person. May anyone that you come into contact with leave a better person. And uh, by the goodness of God, this will happen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.